Welcome to the Growth Guys Podcast, presented by KinderReeseCoaching.com. This is the number one podcast for real estate agents who are serious about growing their business. Get the strategies and tactics to grow your business fast while building the lifestyle you dream of. Now, sit back, buckle up, and get ready, because we're about to get real. The Growth Guys Podcast starts right now. Hey, it's Jeff Kiani. Welcome to this episode of the Growth Guys Podcast. This episode is going to be one of our agent spotlight interview episodes. Every week we try to interview top agents across the country, a lot of which are part of our exponential growth coaching program. So we have a unique insight having worked with a lot of these agents to grow their business. So we're going to bring you these interviews from time to time as episodes on the Growth Guys podcast. So we're excited to kick things off today with our Agent Spotlight interview featuring Saber Kofer, who has been one of our coaching clients for a little while. And we're excited to have her on today's episode, so let's get right to it. Welcome back to the Growth Guys Podcast. And Saber, I mean, while she's logging in, I'll tell you, I was um, reading a little bit of her story last night, and it's funny, I believe, and she can tell me if I'm wrong, uh, but she was a paralegal for a long time, I think um, over a decade, maybe 20 years as a paralegal, and it was only through her and her husband purchasing their first investment property that she ended up getting into real estate. I think it was the agent who helped them facilitate their investment property, and then they, I think they have uh, that started the bug, and they, they have some other investment properties. But that agent said, "Hey, you know what? You'd be really good at real estate." And I think that that's actually how she got into the real estate selling business. Hey, Saber. Hey, I figured it out. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're excited to have you on the call, um, and I just want to let you know that we have Cindy who's going to be jumping in with us too. So she may jump in while we're on. We're going to try to coordinate everything together. She was scheduled to be on at 2.30. So what we may do, depending on what your time will allow, if she jumps on, we'll kind of cut to her so she can do her thing, and then um, we'll cut to you. How's that sound? Hey, that sounds perfect. Uh, yeah. You know, in the meantime, I was just sharing the story. Am I right that you um, got into you real estate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I had been a paralegal for like 25 years. Uh, loved the law field, you know, it was fun. And in 2008, we bought our first foreclosure and I was wearing my realtor out. She says, <laughs> so I just fell in love with real estate. So I started it. And I was just going to have a, yeah, I was just going to have a license, you know, so we could buy investment properties and try to save 6%. And uh, I had no idea it would grow to this point so and that I would love it this much uh, and I know you've spent a lot more time with kitchens than you have me so you guys feel free to you know get your best friend thing going on <laughs> get me out of here. But I do want to I, I, I do want to kind of you know cut to the chase so to speak and that is like um, you know, tell us a little bit about where your business was a year ago because I know you've made giant strides in the last 12 months yes. so where was it at a year ago uh, it was me and two other ladies that were helping me and you know, and, I mean we were selling a lot of real estate and That actually is how uh, we got the attention of Matt Wagner from rate marketing and uh, Then that's how this all came about and because we were just running by the seat of our pants and you know Just selling a lot of real estate and so whenever uh, Matt connected me with you guys and then um, You know Jay assured me it, it was okay. You know, I was just like, you know, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I was just selling real estate. And uh, so he connected me with John. And John said, I just need you to be totally honest with me. That's the only way I can help you. I said, okay. He said, so what systems do you have in place? And I said, what are those? <laughs> I mean, I had no systems. We answered the phone and we ran and we sold houses. And so John had, I mean, he had his work cut out for him. <laughs> Is that true, John? And then Tell us a little bit about it. No, it, 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 you know, immediately, yeah, right. You know, so like Sabro was immediately vulnerable to to being open and real and honest, right? And that's where that's where we have the growth when we can be vulnerable and open and honest with with others around us and even with ourselves, as well as I think what what you'll pick up is like she just went in, just trusted the process, right? It's just it, there is a process here, just trust it, and 
and um, you know, it's been uh, it's been a fun ride for for twelve months, just getting started. So, what were some Absolutely. of the problems? I know, and, and if I in in, in Saber, um, we we kind of you know answered, went through a di- a dig or a, a deep dive, I guess you could say, into um, some of these questions, you know, over the last couple of days, and so I know Saber's been thinking about some of this um, in preparation for this call, and and processes and procedures are all over it. If I look at your answers, you know, that, I mean that you you uh, definitely know that you were missing the processes and procedures. So, I mean, what outside of that, or even if it's just that, can you expand on the problems that you were running into every day? Like what kept you from doing deals? You know what I mean? Like, and just what were the problems every day you were running into at that? You know, I think mainly whenever, you know, I started with John, I was, you know, May, you know, almost a one man show. I had two ladies helping me and they were, you know, leads would come in, people would call and they were going out there and they were showing properties and they're selling properties. We're listing as opportunities came, but we were so far from actually building a true sustainable business the way we were doing that. And I had a Zillow. I mean, I was keeping up my Zillow and my realtor.com leads because that's where I was spending. And um, I had an Excel spreadsheet. And uh, it was pretty cool, except that I didn't have time to mess with it. You know, and my, you know, my legal brain would want to go and I had to not worry about organizing so I could go out and make money. So that's when John had me step back and say, no, we're going to we're going to step back a little bit. We're going to set some things in place and then you're going to really grow. And it has been a process and I haven't been the easiest. I didn't realize I was such a control freak, but I am. And I'm, you know, it's easier for me just to go do it than it is to stop and teach someone how to do it. And so I needed some people in place to help me. And John just really has, I mean, he's just hung in there with me as I have learned to delegate and to stop and train and let go and trust other people to do what they're good at. And it's, I mean, honestly, it's taken this long. I have, I think in the last uh, probably two or three months, even Jamie has told John that she's learning, she's delegating, she's letting go. Yeah. So it, it's been quite a deal. It, it is. It's hard, right? You've got to equip yourself mm-hmm. with with in, in your job as as if you want to grow. As you've got you know equip is you've got to build the team around you, and you've got to not build the team with people that are like you. Yeah, core value alignment, but you've got to you've got to uh, you know equip yourself with people that um, complement you. Right. Mm-hmm. That's that's the key to be able to find that and that that offset your weaknesses. And, and that's that's where you get to propel and you get to grow. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm. So tell me about um, you say you're a, a bit of a control freak and maybe it wasn't the easiest. I What you said right there. I mean, I have a much easier time just doing it myself than yes. trying to show somebody else how to do that. And so I 100 percent get with that. What that ends up is that I got too much on my plate to do uh-huh. and I won't let somebody else do it and that, that just makes me feel frantic and you know it doesn't exactly. it raises my heart rate throughout the whole day if my day was on an EKG meter if I delegate I got a much better <laughs> heart rate you know than if I don't and so I know that there's other people on this call that have that same problem and so I want like what is the biggest thing that you got off of your plate? It was hard for you to let go of, but now you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I was trying to do that myself. Well, okay, so we also at the same time made the transition to EXP from mom and pop. So we're learning some systems there also. And Jamie came on board, she was my client and she got her license. So this all started like in November just kind of getting go or December, I guess, really, and then moved to EXP in January. Jamie joins me about the end of January, gets her license, and I realized very quickly she had her own beauty shop in South Dakota. And I told her, I said, you've got to be administratively strong, right? And she said, oh, absolutely. I can do this. So I immediately realized that she was my person to start handing stuff over to, connected her with John also, so she's on the calls with me. And she's been helping implement everything. And I mean, and it's, it's been wonderful because that's definitely not my strong point. And she's, but that was probably the number one thing is when I started letting go, she set up the EXP stuff. I mean, she set up the quad track to keep up with everything, which is so amazing because John can look at our numbers and he knows 
where we're growing and that's where we are. And at first, I mean, it was absolutely totally crossed because I was like, I have no clue what all this is going to do. But if you stay doing it, we're doing it. So. Yeah, man. Awesome. Trust in the process. Trust in the process mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than to try to figure out a, a way around it or to change it. So, um, so Jamie's obviously been a big help and she was a client of yours. Let me, what's your rhythm like on how do you, how do you direct her on what to do? Do you have a daily meeting, a weekly meeting, but now that you have that person that's so important and delegate that you're allowed to delegate stuff to, how do you communicate with her? You know, in the beginning we were talking daily and then we would meet probably several times a week. We spent a lot of time together. And, but as I started realizing how strong she was in this, that, you know, I just made her promise she can never leave me. So she's with me for life. <laughs> she's my <laughs> partner. And, um, you know, because she knows how to do a lot of things that I don't know now. And that was hard, you know, to let go to, to that point is that I know she's handling it and this is how it works. And then as other agents have joined us, you know, I just say, okay, here's, you know, you go to Jamie for these things. And, you know, and she's also my backup. And so uh, at this point, uh, you know, she's busy raising four little girls and a husband that works out of town. So, uh, you know, we don't get to meet as often. We try to meet at least once every couple of weeks and have lunch and go over things. But we do talk a lot, usually in the mornings and the evenings. Yeah. So that's right. incredible. But I'll tell you one of the things that John taught me that has just become, it's like forever. I mean, it's constantly in my head now is where, and I didn't realize this and it was killing me. Um, because I was working so hard and, and going at it, you know, 120% all the time, 24 seven, that I, I didn't, I mean, one of the questions that John asked me, he said, so how do you feel in the morning and how do you sleep? And I was probably sleeping maybe three to four hours at night. And that was waking up a couple of times in the night, not being able to go sleep. And in the mornings, I actually had the dread of like looking at the phone because there was going to be so much waiting for me. You know, even 530 in the morning, you know, I just go, oh, my gosh. And so the anxiety and I found myself. Had, and this is horrible to admit, but it's absolutely the truth. And that I was having anxiety attacks in the middle of the night. And, you know, I mean, the, the sweating, everything. I mean, it was just like, oh, my gosh. And just sitting there going, can I do this? And it was becoming very overwhelming to me. And I pray my way through that. And then I get to talk to John and he taught me how to direct my energy. And there were things to happen. I'd start telling him, he said, no, nope, you don't need to worry about that. Pass that off to who, you know, and he would tell me that goes to an attorney that goes to Jamie that and things like that. And so I've really learned to protect, you know, my energy and it's helped me through the delegation process, but that's a huge thing for me now. That's yeah. Amazing. It helps me yeah, with my too. Because I'll that? Try, it helps me with my people because I'll start seeing them go on this rabbit trail and worrying about stuff that is out of their control. And I'll say, no, 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 don't spend your energy there. This is what we're gonna do. And I help refocus them. So I've been able to pass that on and help them. And I mean, that's been amazing. Yeah, so just being able to check check yourself and get back on focus when you're getting off track, it sounds like it's been really amazing. Yes. So I know, um, you know, when you started coaching with Kitchens um, and the whole team, I'm sure there were some questions you were asking yourself because there's, you know, a lot of different roads you can go down when you're looking to find solutions or to grow your business. And coaching is just one part of that. But so tell us about like, you know, what you were asking yourself and what held you back from making the decision to do things sooner and a little bit about that. Money. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't learned to invest in myself yet. <laughs> I was taking classes so I'd have my hours met, you know, so every time I renew my license and I would take like the local classes and stuff, but people talk about coaching and I'm going, oh my gosh, that's a lot of money. So, but, you know, Matt told me it was critical and then, you know, so it absolutely was the whole trust and that this was going to pay off and for where my business was going, it was absolutely critical. And, you know, and now, I mean, that's what I tell other people, whether they're solo, building a team, whatever they're doing, you've got to have that coach because it has made such a difference. I mean, I was, uh, I had shared this with John in January. I had looked back, you know, over a year at where we were and what we've done and, you know, and the evolving of our team, we've had people come and go uh, where we are right now is very, I think is a very stable team. But I mean, I had tears. I was just like, I cannot believe where we have come because you know we've been running so hard. I hadn't really paid attention to it. 
But when you sit down and you look at your numbers and you look at your team, you look at the people, you look at the people that left, the ones that came, and I'm blown away. Absolutely blown away. It's amazing. So my takeaway, and I want you to share your numbers a little bit with us here in a second, but my takeaway there is, um, you know, first of all, let's review our numbers. Absolutely, like Saber did. You know, you go back and re review them, and the truth is in the numbers. Uh, so, it, you know, you can't pretend like I'm, there are some people that are scared to look at the numbers and rather pretend that, you know, they don't exist or whatever. Um, wow. And that, if you looked at them, they might not even be as bad as you think. But the other thing is um, – that you know, you don't let the outside noise. I mean, the people that left and all that. It's so mm -hmm. easy to think that you're doing something wrong, or you know, and people are leaving because of, of something that. You, but you, you did a good job of sticking to the path and letting those people take their exits. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just traffic on the road, and if they want to exit, they can exit. But you're staying on your path, and that's what's worked out. I'm sure that there are people that left your team that if they could jump on board right now, they'd probably do it in a heartbeat. You know, that is so true. And one of the things that I've just learned, you know, it was painful. And John would tell me and my husband would say, Sabra, let him go. Just let him go. Let's move on. I was, I was, you know, wasting my energy fretting over it. And because uh, it is hard because you become really close friends with people. But I have learned that it's okay. And everyone needs to find their place. And, uh, you know, and there's, there's probably a, a couple of them that if they came, wanted to come back, I'd be happy to have them. There's some that I figured out they weren't a good fit, and that's hard to know going in. And so John's really been instrumental in helping me learn that, and that it's really okay. The key, the key there is is to you know you have to know what you value, right? You have to know your your, your values to your core, right? So it's the core values because your from your core values everything stems. And your core values become decision-making filters, and they become decision-making filters in who you hire and who you let go. And in the beginning, without knowing that, we bring people on board out of out of sheer pain, right? We, we're, we're experiencing pain. Hey, you've you got a pulse. You want to work? Oh, come on. You can help me out. And yeah. uh, it, it, it just doesn't work that way. And then the other thing is that we hire people that are like us. Mm -hmm. and it's because that we can, you know, hey – I, we, we love hanging out together and, and that's that's not what's the best for you in accomplishing and running a successful business is that Sabre is starting to really uncover who she is and what her strengths in this business is and then it's going to find the people that complement her weaknesses and that's where we see the growth in the team it's just like finding somebody that she can let go like with Jamie, Jamie compliments her and so finding those people and surrounding yourself and building the team that, that complements you is where you start to accelerate and have that growth. And um, it's, it's really important. That's like Sabre mentioned, fit. They just want a good fit. Well, they want a good core value fit, right? And they need right. to, it doesn't mean that they're a bad person, but they just don't fit with what we're trying to accomplish. Exactly. And I mean, they're amazing people and they're amazing agents. And I loved, you know, I loved every one of them. But, you know, it, it wasn't working. And, you know, and it's okay. And it's like, okay, so right now, I mean, like, I've got a guy that joined me and my team, I went, wow, he's like, really uh, out there. And I mean, it's like, you know, he's, I don't even know how to describe him. It's just that, I mean, I call him, I call him Vinny the Closer. But you know, he's totally different than we are. I'm very, I'm very laid back. Well, I think I'm a laid back passive personality. I have some people that tell me I'm very intense and high energy and maybe not, that's not the description, but that's how I feel like I am. And, but now, I mean, if, Somebody comes along and they might be a little bit difficult. Hey, next week he'll have them under contract. That that's how he is. But he's totally opposite. I had somebody tell me one time, uh, an employer way back, said you should always surround yourself and hire people who are smarter than you. And maybe not, you know, it's like John's saying they have different skill sets, different giftings. And it's like when you put that whole piece together, you know, that's when you become successful. So I like to, you know. I kind of think of myself sometimes as a facilitator of bringing people together and helping them to become successful. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's like, I love the Zig Ziglar deal. It shows the guy pushing the ball, you know, pushing the guy in front of him, you know, pushing the ball up the steep, steep mountain. And it says that, you know, when you help others get there, you turn around and you made it too. 
And I love that. Let's have too much fun. Yeah, I love that. Um, and so as a result of all that, I know that you have been crushing it. And so um, in, in one, e one answer, is, um, we don't need to expand on this, but what were your numbers in 2018? 2018, we did, we actually closed uh, 125 transactions. And you have to realize we're a baby team too. So we started with a couple of people that left. We kind of had an ebb and flow. And I am with me. We have six and an admin and have some more that are taking license, going to take their classes and going to get licensed and join us. So we're a very, very young team. The team really started coming together probably uh, kind of spring and then really started coming together like late summer, early fall. So I'm really proud of our numbers. Uh, we did. Um, our actual, our MLS doesn't even show actual numbers because we work all over the panhandle. We did about 18 and a half million. And, um, you know, so just almost reached the, the goal. We're just short of it, but I'm still very proud of us. Sabre did, uh, you did, you did uh, at least half of those, if not more than half, I think is what we, is what we added up. Yeah, I, I actually did the majority. I, I capped pretty much by myself. And then, I mean, and which is amazing, but that just shows you that I'm, I'm a little tired. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I want to age it with the HP. <laughs> so, you know, and I look back on it and I was just like, I mean, and to do those things, those have to be your numbers, you know, whether you're getting a, a piece off what somebody else is doing or what. But, you know, I pretty much carried it this year. So you just can't imagine how I'm, how excited I am for 2019, heaven help. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. It's going to be a better year. I mean, I know it now. And so what is the goal for 2019? Uh, we would like to close 250 transactions. We want to absolutely double. That's, and, that's the go, and it's very doable for us. What I hear uh, so far this year, you've like, um, you know, you tell me, both of y'all have a smile, but I know that in the first two months of this year, you've done twice what you did, like half of last year or some crazy number. Oh, it's crazy. I know. It's it's amazing. Uh, John, of course, I didn't even know. John just told me, he says, do you realize you're up 18% for January from last year? And I went, really? That that's pretty cool. I'm encouraged. And what the thing about my personality is that that makes me just want to stop everything else and just go work that much harder and i i just i thrive on that so it's just i'm i'm the overachiever personality and that may be what happened to some of my team i, I might drive them a little crazy <laughs> but it does it makes me just want to go okay well how much can we do in february and march so i'm real excited for our first quarter numbers yeah so what's uh what's what do you think is going to be the biggest factor for you this year and getting to that number I believe it's having the right people in place and having these systems. And I'll tell you the coolest thing that happened. I was sharing with John uh, just yesterday is that so I have a marketing specialist, too. She's she loves listings. So she has become my marketing specialist and she's amazing and she loves systems. So a key component, you know, to my to my personality. And um, but we were looking at some stuff Tuesday and she just she just told me and Jamie both. I mean, she said, this is not working. We need a system for this. And, you know, and she, but what was cool, it wasn't just like me or John saying that, you know, we need a system for this because this isn't working. Now I've got people who are recognizing when we are missing a system or the system's broken and we need to, we need to fix it. And so she, and I loved it because she took the bull by the horns. I mean, she went in there and she put a system in place and, uh, and everybody's working off of that now to keep us from dropping the ball on, a, you know, another area. So anyway, that's that's pretty fun. Can you just uh, elaborate? So what was this? What's this system for? <laughs> now you're just going to laugh. It's embarrassing. We were just couldn't find all of our contract documents. They were like in everybody's emails and everybody's saying, well, who has this and who has that? Because there's too many hands in the pile. So our new system is we have an email that's strictly for contracts and all contract documents go to that email. And so whether it's Rhiannon or me or Jamie that needs it, you can go to one place and you're going to find that document. So it sounds really silly and simple, but that's where we are. <laughs> I think that's somebody out there can use that. Somebody, you're going to make somebody's <laughs> life easier. You know, one of the things for me is, that probably helped me the most is that I would be embarrassed because of my lack of knowledge and the things I needed in place. And then for some people to tell me, say, if you just, it's like the, you know, having the anniversary or Christmas cards, you know, use a shoebox. 
And it was like, hey, it's okay. You have a, a Zillow spread. I mean, you have an Excel spreadsheet with your Zillow and Realtor.com people that you closed. And I mean, it wasn't very workable, but it was like encouraging because at least I had a little baby step. And, you know, and, and it really is. It's just, but when you run as fast and hard as we do, it's, um, it's real easy to not make the time for those things. You, you know, one thing too, um, and, and, and I, I think a lot of people can relate to this and especially, you know, in small, small business, you're doing less than a million in, in, in revenue. You know, the thing that, that holds us all back is our ego, but more importantly, it's, it's, it's ignorance and it's arrogance. And mm -hmm. it's okay to not know these things, but sometimes our, our arrogant ego stops us from asking questions to just get clear on the simplest of questions. And mm -hmm. when, you can, when you can remove that lid and that doesn't bother you, when you're, you're okay with like not knowing and asking questions, that's where you accelerate growth, right? And so I, that, that's what I heard when, 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 when Saber just shared that. And she just laughed. She's like, I just, we just don't know, but we're going to figure it out. <laughs> And that's when you can remove that ego and, and let that arrogance just go away. Mm -hmm. That's where you see growth, right? That's that's just where you you know things things can explode for you. Yeah, that is so true. And you look at where we are and where we're going. I mean, who would have ever thought? I mean, I got a real estate license to buy a few investment properties and look at what's happening now. And one of the things that was pretty neat, this was kind of my uh, aha moment. It, you know, towards the first of 2018, I started, as we started building the team, I started realizing, you know, cause we were like, you know, we're about changing lives. And my mindset was that was helping people to sell and buy properties and move on to the next chapter of their life. And being a part of their story was so amazing. But then I started realizing it wasn't just about them, but it was about the people that were joining my team because their lives are being changed. And yeah. you know, what's really sweet, they're totally trusting me right now. And I told them, I said, you guys haven't seen anything yet. I said, we are we are just getting started. And John will tell you this. He said, I mean, he was telling Matt that. He said, she's just getting started. I mean, you haven't seen anything yet. And you know, so I really am so thankful for my team because they're trusting me in this. And uh, because, you know, I trust John and Matt and I'm, I'm seeing it now. Last year was an investment year for us. And we're actually seeing the, some of the, I mean, the seeds that we've planted. I mean, we're seeing the fruit now. It really is. It's like, it's like bamboo stalks, right? <clears throat> they grow underwater for what, what is it like five, seven years before they <laughs> grow up and you think they go, they went up overnight, but they've been digging and, and building the root system, you know, for, for the last five, six, seven years. And we can, you can apply it to the same thing as the skyscraper, right? I mean, how long, <laughs> is the foundation being built and you're like, man, they've been working on that project for years. And then all of a sudden you go up by and like, they've got 20 stories up and you're like, Whoa, where did that come from? And so it really is the same, the same thing here, right? When you want to exponentially grow your business, you've got to, you've got to slow down, build the foundation so you can, so you can go faster. Absolutely. Yeah. I love those analogies. Um, I love, I love, I, I always like the iceberg one. I have that, you know, that um, classic yeah. cliche, motivational thing and you see half the yeah. iceberg or yeah. something. Uh, but so I got two more questions for you, Saber, and that is um, I, I, what is one thing, just so that the audience can take away something maybe that they can uh, dwell on a little bit and maybe look to implement, what's one thing that you know for a fact, um, we know Jamie was a big addition, but maybe something else that you know really is gonna be a key economic driver Maybe if not last year, this year, whether that's a new ad campaign, a nurture strategy, some lead gen strategy, anything that you can really pinpoint that you're expecting to really move the needle this year? Well, one of the things that we did, and now I have to tell you this too, John, I mean, John's my advisor. And so what I'll do, I'll get opportunities that come, you know, you know, because everybody prays on the realtor because realtors will spend money, <laughs> you know, thinking that this is going to help them get another lead. And so I can send stuff straight to John and he'll say, no, nope, don't do that. That's a waste. Or, yes, you need to jump in on this one. This one's good. So he's actually helped me to on the financial end and saying, OK, we need to cut back over here and let's, you know, and help me to adjust where my spend was. And so this year, our goal is, we're, you know, we're trying to build our reserve so that I'm ready to add the ISA. And actually, I think my admin is probably going to end up being that person. I think she's, uh, you know, just watching her, working with her. And she's probably going to be coming to one of your classes to learn how to do that. Because honestly, 
I guess I'm my own ISA right now. But yeah. I probably don't do it right. <laughs> but she's actually, I'll be sending her to y'all. And she will be learning to do that. But that is our next big step is the ISA. And I think it's going to help the whole team to, um, you know, to be able to handle all these leads. I mean, she's going to be critical. But I think that's the next big game changer for us this year. Awesome. Yeah, Kitchens, uh, why don't you add on that? I mean, you obviously were pivotal and given the nod, the okay, probably to head in that direction. So maybe you can share some thoughts and anything else that you have said yes to and maybe like how you decide on what you're telling her to say yes to and what you're telling her to say no to. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. You know, when, when starting out, if you're a small team, you know, you're looking for people that, that complement your weaknesses that are, that are cross-functional, right? They, they're, they're kind of dynamic, right? So you might have heard, well, how is she going to have her admin turn into an ISA? Well, it's like you got to understand she's not the she's her DNA is not wired to be a prototypical admin, right? So in the beginning, you have to be you have to be dynamic, right? In in the people that you hire, and the bigger and the bigger that you get, that you become more specialized in in your people and your hires, and so you have to look at it from from that standpoint. The other the other thing is that. You know, everything's based on revenue and cash flow, right? We're not just blindly going out there and making hires because, out of pain without taking a hard look at, at the financial situation. And in our, in, 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 you know, in kind of our right things, right order, that admin is the most critical piece of all, right? Because as you can see, Sabre's team did 125, but I, I think, Sabre, if I recall right, I think you did about 68 to 69 of those 125 transactions. Mm -hmm. And without the leverage of an administrative support to be able to balance you out and do the low, the, the low cost, low hanging you know, items, the low dollar value activities, then you're not able to do that kind of production on your own by yourself. And so paying attention to monitoring cash flow, those are some of the things that we, that we look at. And as soon as cash is right, then we can pull the trigger on that ISA hire as long as we have that admin function in place or a dynamic admin in place, which we which we are uncovering that we have that. So those are just some of the things that you have to take into consideration. You have to t make decisions based on cash flow and revenue and profitability. And if if not, you're gonna you're gonna get in trouble, and you're gonna hire somebody that you're gonna have to turn around and and change their life again because you're gonna have to let them go a couple months later if you're not if you're not really prepared. Yeah, we know how difficult that can be. Yeah, that's not fun. Absolutely. No. So, um, so, Kitchens, tell me about, I know your, one of your goals right now, Saber, is to be building up the reserve, and, and that goes in line with everything that we just talked about, managing cash flow and how important that is. So from a real um, academic level, you know, cash flow one-on-one, -on -one, what are you talking about when you say reserve kitchens, and how do I know what my reserve needs to be? That's a great question. So, uh, and, and, you know, like Sabre mentioned earlier in the call, you know, it's hard to confront current reality, right? That's like you, like you had mentioned, you know, it's sticking your head in the sand. You don't want to look at the numbers. Um, and once you confront that current reality, the current situation, and so it's like, hey, what does it cost us to operate at break even for the business and what it costs you to pay yourself each and every month? What is that number? We have to know the number because what we're looking for is that we want to get to a cash reserve position of at least two months of cash in our operating account and because that we're in a good cash position. So for example, if it costs you $10,000 a month to operate your business and pay yourself, we would want 20,000 in the operating account as the cash reserve. Then we can start being a little more strategic instead of being so tactical because we're just fighting for survival. And that's what we want to move beyond. We want to move beyond to survival. We want to be able to be strategic. We want to be able to start making moves. And, um, you know, sometimes so many people, they won't look at it. So they stay in the, in the, in the fight, in the survival. And what happens when you, when, you, when you just try to survive and you're not moving in a known direction? You run out, you run out of supplies, and, and you die, and, and you end up in this business. You're going to work somewhere else. So it's just really key to understand it's a business, and you've got to take it and, and be serious and run it like a business as well. So uh, two months cash flow, two months of operating capital, every dollar that's required to run your business and pay yourself in the bank. That's what we would consider the first reserve capital benchmark. 
That is it, man. Get to get to core capital is what we call it. We need to get to core capital. Two months of operating expenses in the bank that includes paying yourself what we call a market based wage. Essentially, what it what it what you would pay your what you would pay somebody to do what you're doing. Hmm. Man, so I really appreciate it. There's a lot that we talked about on this call, and I want to thank you, Saber, for sharing um, some of your story and a behind-the-scenes look at what you're working on. I know that you're. I know that you're going to hit the goal this year. I'm 100% confident. I think if you train, well, you're on pace, right? I mean, are you on pace right now? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're we're, we're pace. looking good. <laughs> right, we're Everything looks good. Well, um, we appreciate it, and. Uh, and you know, we'll let you jump off, Saber, if you need to get on about your day. I'm sure that there's a million other uh, things pulling you in different directions. So thank you for joining us today, and uh, we will talk to you soon. Okay, thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And so um, again, we really thank Saber for joining the call today. You know, Cindy, I think was maybe having some technical difficulty with the link as well, but I think that allowed us just more time to hear um, about Saber's story, which is a good one. I think she represents. A lot of the people that are probably on this call um, and your goal is maybe to get to that next level where Cindy's at. I mean, we'll hear more about her story on the next one. We'll be able to give her some more time on the next call because she's, um, you know, probably at the next level. I mean, just to kind of lay the scene for what that sounds like, you know, we know where Saber's at right in that um, 150 to 200 range, you know, headed towards 250 plus. Cindy, on the other hand, is in a, in a different area. Where is she at? Um, they did. They did it. They were right in the 300 range. Their goal is to get to 500. So, you know, she's in a she's in a market where that would command a pretty substantial market share. And so that's that's the direction. Right. And, um, you know, we had made made mention. Sabre had made mention of, you know, some people have come and, 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 and gone. And um, it was it was um, uh, Cindy's mindset is that, you know, she's got a machine. She's got a business and she has, you know, she's like. It doesn't matter who leaves. We're still going to have our huddle tomorrow morning. We're still going to have our team meeting on Tuesday. We're still going to have our luncheon on Wednesday. We're still going to have our huddle on Wednesday. We're still going to have our huddle on Thursday. We're still going to have our huddle on Friday. And our point is, is that you can come and go, but this thing is not going to stop. Right. And so she looks at it and runs it like a business. And um, I, I'll be excited for the for the next session to have her on. And it'd be cool. We'll give her a little bit more time. And uh, just like we were able to do with Sabre today. So that's pretty, uh, pretty exciting. Yeah. So everybody be on the lookout for that call. We'll get that scheduled as soon as possible. Maybe we can do that next week. Even I mentioned we're going to try to do these once a month, but uh, we definitely want to get the Sabres or I mean, uh, Cindy's story as soon as possible um, while fresh in her mind because she went through the exercise of kind of getting all that out of her head on paper too. So I know that she's got some really powerful insights that she can share with us. And speaking of like sharing those insights and getting clear, we talked a lot about that today. Um, we want to show everybody how they can schedule their own clarity call. And so you can schedule a clarity call and you should see it on your screen right now by following that uh, link there. And schedule a clarity call, it's about one hour and we've determined that it's really impossible to get down to the nitty gritty in a half hour. So it's about an hour call that's really focused on getting clear in your business, identifying what's working, what's not working, what represents the best use of your time in an effort to move towards your goal, whatever your goal is. And at the same time, identifying what activities you might be spending time on that are actually moving you farther away from your goal. And so over the course of that 16 minute call, you will come across some major discoveries and walk out of that or hang up that phone with a roadmap on where you need to focus moving forward. And if you want to share you know, anything that uh, you think is important to know about scheduling your clarity call and what you'll get out of it. No, nope. uh, you know, our goal is, is to give you the uh, is to give you the clarity that you need to know where you need to focus and, and what you need to execute on. And, um, you know, we've identified, you know, there's really about only five ways to exponentially grow your business uh, year over year. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. Make sure you're crystal clear coming out of that call to know exactly what you need to focus on and, um, you know, make sure you're executing. And like Jeff said, you're moving in the right direction. That's it. And, and Sabre and Cindy both 
um, started with a clarity call. And you can see here um, with the screen that you're looking at, when you click that link to schedule your clarity call, you just put your information in here and we'll get it scheduled. More than likely, Lolly, one of our team members, will reach out to you to get it scheduled on the calendar for you. Um, but it started with a clarity call for them and, and then they moved on to one-on-one to -on -one coaching with us and that's made a huge impact. You heard Saber and, uh, and what kind of impact it's made on her business. So we're gonna have a special offer for anybody that does feel like coaching is something that would allow them to take it to the next level. On any one of these Spotlight interview series, we're gonna be offering a special offer for those that do sign up for coaching. And so not only gonna, is it gonna include the clarity call, which really starts things off, but it's gonna include your first 30 days of one-on-one -on -one coaching with no cost whatsoever. Um, if you decide to continue, um, you're gonna have a special discount, which is gonna save you $300 a month on that one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, in addition, we're gonna give you access to our Kinder Reach University and our exclusive Inner Circle membership, which costs members a little over $2,000 a year when you add it all together. Um, if you sign up for coaching as well, you're gonna get a free ticket to the Expert Advisor Bootcamp. We talked earlier about Michael, who John was just on a clarity call with before jumping on today's call. And uh, you know he's all fired up and he's um, raring to go with, with what he got out of the boot camp. So you're actually gonna get a free ticket to attend the boot camp. You'll get access to two live expert advisor calls every month, including a third shot caller prospecting call. It's a role play and group coaching call focused on scripts and dialogue and stuff like that. Every Friday. What's that, Kitch? I said every week. Every week. And you're also going to get a 365 page expert advisor workbook, which is jam packed of everything that we talk about at these boot camps. I mean, this sucker is, you know, jam packed. This is the Bible, so to speak. And so um, if you feel like coaching is something for you, if it's not, then, uh, then you know, don't. If you're in a position where, you know, you're trying to pay the rent, uh, you know, and if you're just, uh, you know, getting started or something, we got other things for you. So don't hesitate to schedule your clarity call because we will get you clear on what you need to do next, no matter where you're at in your business. But if you're at the point like Saber was and she realizes that investing in herself, you know, may be the best move, then uh, not only schedule your clarity call, but take advantage of the one-on-one -on -one coaching special offer because that with the discounts and the free gifts and, and stuff that you get really zero zeroes out cost on an annual basis. Absolutely. So again, everybody can schedule their clarity call with what you see there on the screen. We'll open up these last few minutes for any questions. If there's anybody on the call who has a question, you can click the little hand icon, I think on your screen, and that would raise your hand, so to speak, and we can go ahead and unmute you, or you can just drop a question in the chat box. So we will give um, a few minutes here to allow anybody to ask any questions if they've got them. Absolutely. <laughs> I think to, to your point of, you know, being, being aware of, you know, helping you get clear financial position, you might not be in it just yet. So like, for example, I'll share with Mike, you know, the, the, the clarity call. I mean, our goal, if he executes on the items that, uh, that we talked about coming out of his call, Without a doubt, he'll be in a position to jump into coaching um, sooner than what he even thinks. And so it's that important, guys, to get clear, get clear on the roadmap. And like I said, it's, you've got to have direction, which is clarity. Once you have direction, you need alignment. Alignment is what do I need to focus on? Once you have that, then it's all about commitment. What am I committing on? What am I committing to? And I have to execute. So it really is those three things, guys, and that's and that's what we're here to help you get through one. Yep. So don't hesitate to schedule your clarity call. Doesn't cost you anything. It's worth who knows how much if you turn your mind on and really go to work with, with what we talk about. It's invaluable. So I want to thank everybody for joining us. Kitchens, of course, I thank you for your time. And and we're going to be doing another one of these spotlight interviews with Cindy here, I would imagine, real soon. And then be on the lookout for these reoccurring spotlight interview series every month. If you've got a good story and you're willing to share what's going on and give us a behind the scenes look at your business, reach out to us. We would love to feature you on one of the upcoming agent spotlight calls. 
Love it. So be sure and uh, be sure and do that in uh, kitchens. Anything, any final words before we sign off for today? Nope. Appreciate you guys and, uh, uh, connecting and chatting with you guys soon. To find out how to build a seven figure real estate business in three years or less, go to kinderreesecoaching.com. You've been listening to the Growth Guys Podcast. If you want us to help you grow your real estate business, go to kinderreesecoaching.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the Growth Guys Podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast fix to get new, fresh weekly episodes. Catch you next time on the Growth Guys Podcast.